Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Angry Belly Anime Watch Podcast. Where we watch anime. How are you doing today? Honestly, I'm feeling myself today. I got a winter coat today. I got a, winter a haircut today. And it's like, it's not like a trim. It was like a significant haircut. I cut off like most of my hair today. Well, that's fantastic news. You care, your hair was pretty ugly before, so it needed it. Look, here's the thing. I'm not going to try to throw shade. But I know my dad's never going to listen to this, right? But he let his hair get so long this last year. And I was like, oh my God, like he doesn't even take care of it. LOL. And then like, I was looking at a picture of myself from last week. And I was like, oh my God, I, look just I am like not that. taking care of my hair. I'm such a piece of shit. So to be perfectly fair, I haven't seen you in months. So I don't actually know what your hair looks like. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll send you a picture, but like, it just looks like 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 you saw it last time, but less healthy. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> but now you feel like a new person. Haircut, new coat, good stuff. I know, it's good. Also, I just sent you a picture of my hair so you can judge it properly. Properly. If you choose. Properly. <laughs> oh, wow, you sent me a Snapchat? Yes, I sent it in Snapchat. Oh, it has this like... I didn't want to send it by text. The, the, why? What do you think I'm going to do with your... Dang, that your hair was super long. I know, right? Interesting. It, I was like... How the fuck is it this long? Yeah, no, it I mean that's a huge cut, dude. That's I know over half your hair you cut off. I'm really I'm feeling good. I'm feeling refreshed. I think I, I didn't realize how much I needed a change. And now that it's gone, I was like, oh wow. I feel lighter with a little pep in my step. You know, today was just a boring day of building flats. And I was like, I'm need a change. Like how does Andrew feel about this change? It, it, there is a right answer to this, by the way, Andrew. The thing is, up until about an hour ago, I was going to keep it a secret from him and surprise him because I'm going to Dallas on, in two days from now. Oh, right. So I was going to like not video chat him for the next two days and like surprise him, you know? Mm. I totally chickened out of this. I could not wait. I called him pretty much an hour after the haircut and I was like, I got to tell you something. Obviously... He loves it. If he didn't, it'd be out the front door for that guy. <laughs> Not the back door. The front door specifically. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. Insert joke here about the back door. Yep. But Okay, moving on. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we're watching Cowboy Bebop, in case you're curious. Wait. What? How are you, Lou Dog? Oh, you know me, the Lou D-O-double-G. I'm doing pretty good. At the time of this recording, we're inching to 600 subs on the channel. Holy shiitake mushrooms. Pun. So that's pretty good. Four more subs and we, or sorry, six more, excuse me, and we hit 600. I'm hoping by the time this comes out, we're well past 600, but you know. Yeah, shit. Um, it's, You'll hit that in like a day, dude. <laughs> Probably, maybe, hopefully. We'll see how this next stream goes. Um, and also how shorts Shit. do, because I'm experimenting with that, but not important right now. Merch? Merch. Um, I mean, I am I want to do merch, really, when we hit, when I get monetized. I literally buy merch. When we get monetized on YouTube. That's the goal. And I've been stressed out because I've been looking at various ways to do it. And so I'm trying to figure that out. You know, I really need an assistant. Uh, maybe this podcast can fund my, my assistant that I will have in the future. I mean, I'd buy a shirt. Thank you. Zeph would buy a shirt. Good old Zeph. Uh, <laughs> I know the two of us would buy a shirt. I've, yep. <laughs> At least. At least. Miss Gloria would have to buy a shirt. Miss Gloria. Joe Carpenter would buy a shirt. He might buy a shirt. He might. If he figures out how to use the website to do it, I'm sure he would. Watch him listen to this and be so insulted. Joe, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send him the link to this podcast. He's gonna call me and be like, "You little shit, Meh, you little shit." Meh. Yeah, that's, that's his. That's our mentor's endearing term. Uh, His endearing term, endearing saying to us calls us little shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite literally, the man is like six foot four, <laughs> and I'm five foot two according to Gloria. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm six foot two according to the internet. So right, right. Well, I mean, I've been told I'm six two in the field and six two in in their heart in people's hearts. So sorry, five two in the field. Six two in people's hearts. There you go. I said that right. Wait, is there a quote from the game plan where it's like number one on the field, number one in their hearts? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sure with Dwayne. That was probably what the joke was from. Dwayne it? the Cock Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, that was All right. very funny. This, I think if we remember correctly, this podcast is about watching anime. It is? Yeah. We might have we gone went off the rails for about six minutes there, but that's all right. It'd be like that, you know? Oh, boy. So through this chunk... We're watching episodes 17 through 20, a good four episodes. 
of hanging out with the Bebop crew. Bebop. Holistically, how do you feel about these this chunk of episodes? Okay. On the whole, I really enjoyed two of them yeah. very strongly. Mm-hmm. And the other two, I could take or leave. Got it. I Don't tell me what those are. Don't tell me what those are. I'm not going to tell you until we get to them. Got it. But I don't know. I think there's important things from at least three of these episodes. For sure. For sure. This chunk of episodes does contain, so far, my absolute favorite episode of the series. I I understand why. Yeah. So I'm ready. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. Well, let's get right into Mushroom Samba, Woo-hoo. episode 17. The stupid synopsis by Louis is as follows. Big ship called Bebop gets hit by little ship and it falls onto moon. That's the synopsis. So valid. But um bum. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so basically we open up Ian and Ed. They're like, oh my god, there's no food here. What do we do? Jet has some really safe rations. Rations and breaking in case of emergency, and he means like emergency. He's like kind of just like who freaking ate these, you goddamn losers. Ed finds food. In his pocket, or her pocket, excuse me, because we learned last episode that Ed is actually a girl. Actually a girl. Yes. Shock. Big shock. Um, Finds food in pocket, falls over, and Ian eats it, which honestly, the dog should be the one eating, in my opinion, here, if there's any food. I know. Also, I would like to note that the food was a pistachio, and once I ate a pistachio, and it had a maggot in it. Great. Okay, moving on. (laughs) The (laughs) beef Suffers a, a hit and run, which is why uh, Ed falls over. Mentioned before, the Bebop does indeed crash land, and Faye begins to become sick. Obviously, Ian brings over the aforementioned safety rations, and yeah, and they were <laughs> expired by a year. So Faye was a little sick. Oh my sicky. gosh! This reminds me of the time, and oh no. Louis, I'm sure you remember this time, mm. but the time that I had multi tortellini in my fridge, mm-hmm. and uh, I ate it yeah. because I thought I could get away with it because I was going to boil all the germs off, and then I had a COVID scare because I got super sick, and it's because I ate multi tortellini. Anyways. I do remember this, and <laughs> I wish I could judge you for it, truthfully. I have been known in my life to eat raw things, to eat n- just things that aren't good. <laughs> I know. Faye commits a food crime. And I just want to say that I think we could both relate to that. I do think so. I've gotten a lot better about it, I will say. But I have done it. I cannot oh, yeah. judge you for this. <laughs> uh, moving on. Ed is going to go find food. Um, Spike and uh, Jet are like, we got to fix the ship. Go find food. And I just need to say this. This next part. It's probably one of my most favorite, like, little chunks in the whole series of the Ed and Ian super... Super combo. <laughs> I have it I have it here called, entitled in my notes, the Ed and Ian super swag adventure. Aww. Because there's just a fun little montage of them hanging out, walking all over the moon, trying to figure out what they're going to do. And I just think it's cute. Kid and dog hanging out. The music is really great. That's what I. That's what I put down here, the cute and cool music. I really enjoyed it. I think it does it it does the relationship that Ian and Ed have justice, in my opinion. It was freaking adorable. It was amazing. I loved it. And watching Ed Naruto run <laughs> literally through the desert. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, before Naruto was Naruto, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> it's how I know Ed was cooler than all of us before. Uh yeah. Anyway, trendsetter <laughs> alert. So they can see uh, the the hit and run ship. They're like, oh, my God, that's the ship. Let's go chase after it. And so they they kind of lose it or whatever. And then they see a watermelon stand. And, and, and of course, they're doing the whole like, oh, my God, I have to have this because I'm hungry. But they have no money. The guy's like, it's a thousand oolongs, which I don't know what that translates to in like American money or any kind of money. But a thousand dollars, anything sounds way too expensive. Let me, let me, okay. Oh. Let, me, let me look this up. All right, look it up. Well, well, Katie looks that up. I'm gonna eat a Rolo because I do have one in front of me. Everybody, comment down below. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Okay, um, one one Wulong uh-huh. is allegedly uh worth what the hell? So one website says. One Wulong is worth 0.00003143 US dollars. But then this other website says 
one Wulong is roughly worth one cent mm. or half of a penny. And then this other one says one Wulong is equivalent to 0. 0.001 Bitcoin, which is worth 60 US dollars. So honestly, I'm so lost. Yeah, I feel like. Well, because in another episode, the next episode, they talk about having to accept Faye's mail. Accept the package. And they have to pay for it, which he's like, it ends up racking up to like 31,000 Wulong or something like that. And so I can't imagine that it's not 31,000. I I would almost imagine that like, it's not even half a cent. I would imagine that that first number you said is probably the most correct. Yeah. So like the watermelon would actually be like. 10 bucks or something. 10 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. Which still, it seems egregious for fruit. It does. Moving on, though. Sexy lady comes up in a vehicle, buys a watermelon, is just like, oh, these dirty peasants, I'm going to leave now. Uh, But she does hand a picture to the watermelon man, and it's like, hey, here, if you find this guy, keep the change, hun. Pretty sure that, like... Bounty hunter? I know. I'm pretty sure that that she... She does hand him a, a a dollar bill that is exactly a thousand wulongs, right? I feel like that's what happened. And she's like, keep the change. But there's like no change to keep. I was confused about that. Maybe it was just her messing around or whatever. Or maybe I looked. I saw that wrong. Regardless. um, Yeah. Bounty hunter question mark. Why would she be looking for this person? So somehow Ian and Ed sneak onto the car and the lady gets in trouble because she stops for gas and like, oh, this routine Jack here. We're looking for this guy, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, oh, I'm actually looking for him too for the bounty. And it was just the cops open her trunk, come to find a sleeping Ed and Ian. Very cute. Also, I will say, I don't know about you, Katie, a little confused about why they even got in the vehicle in the first place. Was it to make it to town? What was their, how would they have gotten back? There was no plan here. So- I don't understand the thought process, but I also don't understand the thought process of Spike and Jet being like, hey, child, why don't you wander into the desert of a planet we've never explored before? So I don't really understand that, but I don't know. So I guess their idea was that we get to town, we can get back. But like, what if she was going like 60 miles away? You know, like. (laughs) Right, right, right. I don't know. Anyways, yes, agreed. So they sneak off the car as the lady's getting in trouble to make it to town. Ian and Ed find Domino, the guy in the photo, the guy they're looking for. Another guy comes up, proclaims he's going to put him in a coffin and the coffin gets run over as he says that because Domino sold a mushroom to his brother who died because of the psychedelics from the mushroom. I got to say, I laughed out loud when the cof- the coffin got run over by that, that big truck. I was like, that was great. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I don't know. It just, it, I don't understand the like, we'll talk more about this episode towards the end. But other than that moment, I didn't really care for that character. Like, I was just kind of like, okay, he wants to a- avenge his brother, I guess. But it also has this vague, yeah. <laughs> vague thing where it's like, is he also in cahoots with the initial Afro sexy lady? Like, I'm kind of confused with this. Yeah. It almost felt like that might have been the case, but it indeed was not. Because we see the domino runs away. Ian eats a mushroom and starts to act weird. Kind of starts to like do this little hoppy maneuver. Oh my God. His little tippy taps were so cute. It was adorable. And in retrospect, I'm like, why didn't they show us what he was seeing? Because they showed us later on what everyone else was seeing when they were tripping on the mushrooms. So I was a little confused about that. Okay, Mm -hmm. also, let me just say, first of all, fucking Ed drove me goddamn nuts here. Ed is standing here right next to this entire conversation of, oh my God, I'm so mad. I'm going to kill you because my brother ate your mushroom and then died. And then Ed is like, oh, my God, a mushroom. Oh, my God. Really? You're fucking like Ed is supposed to be a genius. And it drove me absolutely nuts. (laughs) Uh, We should name this episode Ed the Menace because Ed, this whole next part of the episode, Ed is just the biggest menace. Such chaotic neutral energy here. No, absolutely. Ian and Ed um, leave uh, Mushrooms out for the Bebop crew. And so essentially, to further back our claim that Ed is indeed a menace, he hides in the tent that is outside of the Bebop with 
various plates set out for each crew member and also question mark to the crew member because they got to be dumb as rocks at common sense. If you see a mushroom, a random mushroom on a plate. Yes, eh? <laughs> here's the angry belly PSA. Do not eat the mushroom. Oh. Right. Right. I feel like that should be a rule of life. Just don't eat the mushroom. Well, Jet literally says, this can't be. This cannot be. He's like, there's no way this is real. And then he does it anyways. And I was like, no. He fucking eats it. The dude eats it. <laughs> and Okay, I could get Spike. I could get Spike doing that. I could get Faye doing that too. But not Jet. I Yes, especially because in the beginning of the episode, they established that like she will eat anything that she finds if she's hungry because she doesn't yeah, like yeah. to be uncomfortable because she's a princess, like that sort of thing. And then Spike is just Spike. So I could buy both of them doing that. But Jet, he even had the through line, like you were saying, the through line of knowledge to be like, hey, uh, probably shouldn't eat this. I'm going to, though. Thug life. Thug life, indeed. Because that's the only life a thug can live. Uh, but they all uh, begin to like kind of hiccup a little bit, and then they begin to hallucinate. They all have wildly different hallucinations. And this moment, though, was fantastic. It starts in, like, Faye is, like, swimming, swimming. in water, and Jet is talking to his plants uh, and, like, trying to figure out the secret okay, okay. way of life. Okay, that, that's, that was my other issue. Was like, we didn't get to see what Ian or Jet were looking at. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. I wanted like, to see the dog's perspective of this trip. No, me too. And, and like, the fact that, like, another reason why... Our, our 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 friend Ed is a menace. Someone died from these. Oh, <laughs> I just want to mention that again. Fucked up. So Ed was like, "Let me experiment." And Ed's standing there too. No, for sure. The best one, though, in my humble opinion, was Spike. Literally, has this hallucination that it's this massive stairway, and he's like exploring this alternate ether. But he's literally just standing there, and he's not. He's like. Literally marching. picking up his feet, He's but like not marching. coming up to the next step. It was so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Again, I we'll, we'll talk more, but that was a good gag. Yes. It was great. So, okay, okay. So yeah, they begin to hallucinate. Um, Ian and Ed are just kind of observing. Big Shot comes on the TV and says, Domino, it has a bounty. Um, Ian and Ed think for some reason it's a great idea to get this bounty. So they leave. That Afro sexy lady was like, oh, there they are. And they steal the cop car because for whatever reason, they just passed by the cop, the police station randomly on that scooter. So like, whatever. <laughs> we go back to the guy in like the bar or wherever he is, the, 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 the brother guy, the Benjamin brother guy, and he's eating a snow cone now. There's, there's, I think there's a certain level in, in, in animation, right? Where you have to be like, I got to look past that. I cannot fucking look past this snow cone he was eating. It was like, oh my God, it looked fucking nasty. It looked weird. It looked, it looked like somebody had the animation and was like, oh shit, forgot to put a snow cone here. Let me just like take one, a picture, cut it out real quick and just put it on the animation. It looked horrible. <laughs> it it looked like somebody it. dribbled ketchup on styrofoam. <laughs> I took a picture. Literally, it, 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 it looked so weird. I was like, what the fuck is I'm so this? glad you brought that up. I would have totally forgotten about that, but it was schnasty. It was, it was disgusting. It looked weird. It just looked so, it did not look appetizing. It also looked like a real photo in the, anyways, it, it was a weird photo. <laughs> <laughs> he um, sees them as well. We 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 switch to Ian and Ed finding Domino in the the hit and run ship. All through lines, the hit and run ship is actually Domino's ship. They go inside in a very Dennis the Menace, or in this case, Ed the Menace like way, shoots stink bug spray on him. And so I'm like, so does this mean or stink bug gas is what my notes here? Uh-huh. Does this mean that what Ed shot was? the stinky spray from the bug or is this stink bug killing spray? Cause I feel like those make differences. That's well, the, the, the animations made, made it look like, cause it was like a musty green, which leads me to believe it was the scent 
of the stink bug. Right. Uh, however, that's really impractical and doesn't really make sense as to how that could be bottled. <laughs> Unless they had them like in there. But also like, why would you use an aerosol weapon? It's fucking stupid. It's like putting pepper spray in an unventilated room. Like you're hurting yourself. As I, I don't know. Ed, for somebody who's supposed to be literally a genius, makes the worst decisions this episode. And this is an Ed episode, so I'm like, I feel like an there. An Ed were, episode. Well, we'll move past this because I do have my, my more thoughts about this episode. But moving on. Okay, so the chase is on. Both of um the girl and the guy find him and are on the. Chase. They're both chasing Ed and Ian, while Ian and Ed are chasing Domino. Well, I guess they're all technically chasing Domino, but you know what I mean. The music was really great in this section. I really enjoyed it. The chase uh, music, Kawaii Bebop does well with this, and I think we've both established that those are our feelings about it. But Ed catches up at the top of this train that's going, or is this the bus? I don't remember. And um, oh, it is a train, yes. And they're they're like going at it. They're kind of fighting. Ian kind of goes rogue and and starts like attacking the guy, which I thought was really funny. Because Ian is just a little corgi and they can't really do much. Anyways, the guy and the girl are, are in the vehicle. Or sorry, the guy's on the train. He gets thrown off the train. The girl's in her vehicle chasing the train. Falls off the train onto the girl's vehicle. And then they like crash and get thrown out. How did they not die? Don't know. But <laughs> they're now out of the equation for the rest of the episode. In case you were curious about that. So a cow decides. I'm going to step onto the tracks. Stops the train. The train breaks, which I'm pretty sure in real life, trains just keep going. So I, in that moment, I was like, oh, the the cow's dead. Wasn't stopped just in time. And Ed does the dumbest thing to add to the, to the Ed behavior going on here, in my opinion. Ed does this thing where he's like, oh, hey, I've got you in my clutches now. And this literal man is like okay i'm gonna give you these mushrooms if you just let me go and they're worth so much money and he's like done deal so ed being a dummy takes the mushrooms and leaves because they're still fucking illegal mushrooms ed get with it you're in possession of an illegal drug but also this does give us in my opinion one of the best moments in this series so far where like ed is talking to domino or what's his name and it's like, okay, well, you know, bye. And then <laughs> he looks to the cow and he's literally like, thank you so much. And the cow is like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but that to me oh, is so dude, good. It was great. It was amazing. And I, yeah, I agree with you. I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, that. <laughs> I do have that on my notes as well. So they they do trade and Ian and Ed go back and the cops show up and they're like, hey, this is what's been going on. Mushrooms, question mark. And it seems like everybody with Spike is done with their hallucinations. Spike kind of walks out with the bag full of, of illegal mushrooms that are supposed to be worth 100,000 wulong a piece. And then it's very suspicious. The cop scans the mushrooms and it's like, oh, these are clean. And so, and then we realized this episode really just gave them some more time to like live and didn't really do much for them because Ed botched the bounty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's talk about this episode for a second. This, so honestly, I just, I, I thought it was delightful. It, it drove me nuts. It, it just, cause Ed just kept making the stupidest decisions. Right. Like, the whole episode. It was just, like, wrong turn after wrong turn. But ultimately, f for a character that we haven't really seen much on their own, I really enjoyed watching Ed and the dog just kind of tootle around. I thought it was delightful. I agree. I think this is not one of the strongest episodes, but I do think that there are moments in this episode that I'm going to take away from and be like, this little clip of Ian and Ed traveling together is... Cowboy Bebop, right? Precious. Like, it's yeah. precious. No, I know it, what you mean. And it absolutely is like, if I'm going to show a clip to someone on what Cowboy Bebop is, one of the clips I'm going to show is Spike and one of the beginning villains, I can't remember his name with the bloody eye, that fight, that first fight with the music oh, sure. and the fight choreography. 
that's going to be one of those clips. And then another one is definitely going to be the Ian and Ed clip of them traveling. Cause I thought it was so sweet. And I thought it was also something of like, there's an, there's an adventure here. There's happiness. There's a, a thing of yeah. being free and that sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I think that the episode itself is, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, super okay. You put it perfectly. What's next, Katie? Episode 18. Speak like a child. And uh, in this episode, the uh, stupid synopsis is as follows. A U.S. drone comes in and, um, or sorry, not a U.S. drone. An Amazon drone comes in, delivers a package twice, and um, then everyone is figuring out how to, how, to, how to use it. Done deal. Bada bing. Great synopsis. Thank you. Thank you. So it opens up on Faye dramatically betting on horse races, which Catboy B- Bebop does this thing where it dramatically opens up episodes. <laughs> Uh, this was no uh, no exception. Jet is is telling a story to Spike and Ed, and they're now thinking about yummy food. We look at Ed, and dude has his feet out typing on his computer. Of course, I I literally need you to know that is the first note of this episode. I said Ed typing with feet. Now this is no exception because there was a good foot shot in the last episode. And guess what? There's one in the next two as well. And this is my rant for the day. I've had one literally in every single last episode. I don't understand what the fuck the creator's problem of this show is. That they need to feature a young underage girl's feet in every single episode in close detail. I don't get it. If somebody could please educate me on that, I would love to understand. (sighs) Well said. I, I don't know. <laughs> I do it's just not like know. if it was one one or two times, I'd be like, classic. That's just a part of her body, you know? That's normal. But it's the fact that it, there is literally a close-up of her toes, her nasty-ass toes, in every single episode. It feels intentional. You know what I mean? And I think it was the last episode, too, where she was like, oh, when I go out to look for food, I'm going to put on socks and shoes. And she was like, you know what? Nah. And it takes proceeds to take yeah, your socks I just, off. I don't, I don't get it. Anyways, I don't get it. It's very Dan Schneidery. <laughs> very Dan Schneidery. Agreed. Um. So, Jet scoops up the package for Faye because the the drones come in and, and he's like, oh, I guess I'll get this for her. They, uh, Faye um finishes up what she's doing and, and um goes to the Bebop crew and he's like, hey, this is how much you owe me, sixteen hundred Wulongs. Or 16,000 Wulongs. And she's like, for what? This package. And he's like, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm done by. So she thought they were the debt collectors is what we figure out. She's like, I want nothing to do with this. She leaves. And she goes back to bet on her horses. Uh, actually, later we find out they're dogs, but not the point. Dogs, yeah. Spike opens it and it's a VHS tape. Whoa. Which those of us who were born either early 2000s or in the 90s and before remember these. Um, very vividly, I have a vivid memory of always watching The Phantom Menace on VHS specifically. Aww. Yes, I know. Very sad. Um, they go. No, not sad. It's, it's not remastered, which means it's actually probably better. Probably. In the So they call it an artifact, which I'm like, dang, that's crazy because that's my childhood right there. They go sell it. <laughs> They're going to go and try and sell it to a videotape enthusiast. I don't, they don't actually. I, maybe they do say what he is. But anyways. So the video tape enthusiast, a.k.a. nerd, talks about the, the history of the VHS and uh, Spike just starts to fuck up equipment. He kind of just like is like, oh, I'm going to press this button and the spring comes out and he's like, I'm going to burn this cigarette on there. He's like, don't be smoking, blah, blah, blah. Like, OK, whatever. And then they're, they're like, they've had enough. Jet's had enough. He's like, dude, just fucking what's this? <laughs> you know, do you want to buy it? They see what's in the tape. And there's just a bunch of walking and then we start to see a girl and then it just kind of messes up. He's like, oh, no, the beta thing, the beta player is eating the the, the tape. And then Spike is like, you know what will fix this? My foot. <laughs> Fucking Spike sticks his foot so far up the beta tape reader's ass that it just explodes. Not his finest moment, I will say. He always does this, though. He, he always does. lets his impatience get the best of him. For sure. But this is Spike. This is Spike. Quintessential Spike, if you yeah, will. Yeah, this is in within character for him. Yeah. Anyways, as I was saying earlier, Faye is now betting on dog races. Oh, wait, wait, wait. But also, the guy flips his shit 
Oh, he does. Spike, not only does Spike just kick it, he destroys essentially this guy's entire setup. Just oh, like for, sure. for those of you who haven't rewatched recently. And it's really funny because the guy gets really pissy. And Louie and I have a friend mm. who works with technology really closely that I feel like would also get really, really <laughs> angry in the same way that this guy does. I know exactly who you're talking about. You we won't. <laughs> We won't yeah. say who we won't say who I, we're talking I love about. Him, if if he's listening to this, I love him very much. But very Her, funny to me. Agreed, agreed. I <laughs> I didn't think about that, but yes. <laughs> yeah. They figure out they're like they're the guy the 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 nerd dude is calling them on the bebop like hey fix my shit and they're like mm, no and so they just don't fix this shit. But then they figure out, or sorry, Ed figures out that there is a a beta tape on Earth. So they go to Earth in Asia specifically, and they make it there. But they they need to they, they need to look for the tape. So they're going through this building. They're trekking through water. They also, and I just actually have this really fun. I think this is the second episode in a row. There's a fun montage. Spike and Jet montage of death is what I have in the notes named as because it's fun music. I think it perfectly encapsulates their friendship and their partnership to be like, oh, we're in this together, but we're also having fun and doing fun gangs, but also maybe we're going to (laughs) die. Not sure. (laughs) It was good. I I thoroughly enjoyed that. So they're going through water again and they find out that they're looking, what they're looking for is uh, they find the thing that they're looking for. They find like a wall, right? full with compartments with VHS tapes. And it's just kind of like, oh yeah, that's the one that I want. And so they just, I think, I believe Jet's exact words were, bigger's always better, right? Proceeds to take the biggest tape player without keeping in mind that it needed a specific one because the nerd said so. Anyways, spoiler alert, they don't get the right one. And um, they're pretty bummed about it because they went to Asia, they went to a whole other fucking planet to get this thing and it did not pan out well for them who would have thunk so again they get a package where he has to pay another 1600 wulongs and is like or 16,000 excuse me and what what katie can you tell me what it is that comes in this package in the package the second package the second package oh wouldn't it be so magical (laughs) if a tape player showed up directly to the ship It'd be amazing. And guess what happens? It, it's, it's, the, it, it's the tape. It, yep, yep. It, it is. It's exactly what they need to be a yep. disc player. So they did that trip for nothing. Uh, but then they, <laughs> they, do, they do watch the tape. Fa- it feels so sassy. No, it, it was very fun. I thought it was fun. Faye comes back. Faye's like, hey, I know I like left, but Jet and Spike are too bored without me, so I got to go back. <laughs> is basically oh, her reason yeah, for coming back. Thing. Yeah, when she was talking to Ed, they start to watch the tape. Or actually, oh, she was going to watch the tape, right? The dog calls on the phone and calls Faye first. And then Ed is like, oh, who are you talking to? <laughs> that is, yes. I love, I just that love the relationship. So funny. I just love the relationship. And of course, it's Faye, right? Uh, um, yeah, and, of course. So then Faye gets back or whatever. And they're like, oh, you're back. You, you know, you dookie head. And then Jet's like, hey, you owe me 32,000 oolongs. And she's like, oh, okay. And then he's like, so you can't watch this until you give me my money. And she's like, okay. And so she walks out of the room. They begin to watch a tape. And it's very obvious that the person in this tape is Faye. Is a young Faye from presumably physically 10 years ago for her. Also, right. spoiler alert, Faye did not fully leave the room and is still definitely watching. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. She's creeping in there in that in that like um uh, Millennium Falcon like circular doorway because the Falcon has stuff like that. Anyway, that's just what it reminded me of. But she's still just kind of like lurking about very true. And um we realize that that's Faye as a child. If she's 20 years old, I assume she's 10 years old in that. We realize that it's a time capsule. To be sent to 10 years into the future. Not really sure how this works because she is... Oh, don't even get me started on this. It makes no sense. Cryogenically frozen somehow receives the package despite being 70-something years. Anyways. So I I have some some theories on this, okay? Okay. So 
the video starts off and she's like, hey, this is a time capsule for us 10 years in the future. And she makes a really cute video talking to herself in the future. Like she's our own biggest cheerleader. It's just, it's really wholesome and adorable, right? It is. So the whole thing is that it's, it's meant to be for themselves 10 years in the future. So presumably they have it sent or like on a timer to be sent 10 years or some, something like that. Right. But it, it must have been like, what is it, 65 years that have passed? I got to look at my notes, but it's uh, it's definitely more than 50. It's like 50 or 60 years plus like however many she's been unfrozen for. So who the fuck sent it? So my money. So it, it could be the people from the like debt collector stuff because we don't know whatever really happened to her possessions. Right. It could be that she has family, maybe. Oh, my God. What if it, it's her family and they found it and they've been trying to contact her and, like, this is their means of reaching out or something like that. I guess or, we would see like, that potentially the guy later. Who saved her. Maybe the guy who saved her has, like, is was in holding of those possessions and somebody came on to those possessions. I don't know. I just, there's, there's something fishy there. And I feel like if that's not solved, I'm going to be a little peeved. I'm going to be wondering for a long time. For sure. These I agree. Like how do they have her info? There's a lot of questions there. Yeah, uh, for sure. I think the saddest part of this whole episode is the fact that she can't remember. Yeah. And, um, I, I, watching her like, just have this reaction of like, I realize that that it's obviously supposed to be me, but I don't know who I am still, despite this big clue and despite seeing myself here, you know, yeah. and um, I thought that was really sad. Anyways, moving on. So what was your thought about this episode? I have a lot of like disdain for Faye Valentine. I mean, uh, I feel like I've been very upfront that she's just not my favorite character yeah. Uh, I feel like she's very cocky. She's very presumptuous, very entitled. Oh, for sure. And then it's like moments like this where I remember her backstory and that she just, that makes me really feel for her. I still don't love her as a person. And I, I don't think, you know, her past, obviously her past definitely has a huge impact on who she is today. And I, but I, I mean, obviously I don't think it gives her an excuse to treat people the way she does all the time. But this made me really sad. Her young self in the video is so sweet, almost like kind of reserved and and hesitant in a way that's just so opposite the Faye that we know, who is so confident and ready to jump the gun and always a step above everybody else, or I guess a step ahead of everybody else. So it was like, I don't know, it's just, it's really sad. And it just feels like they're two completely different people of who she could have been and who she is. Right. And maybe we'll see some of that kind of those two worlds mesh together as we move forward. But I got to say that I think I'm not going to completely agree with you as far as like not liking her. I think there's just a lot to unpack and a lot we still don't know about her. Yeah. And, and so I'm trying to hold my my harshness towards her within myself until we kind of see the full picture. I will say that. There are parts of this episode that work very well, much like Mushroom Samba, right? Like, I, I do think yeah. that there are parts of this episode that work very, very well. Yeah. Pulling at the heartstrings, that sort of thing. The montage and, and that and, and with Jet and Spike. But all in all, again, just like the last one, not my favorite episode in the world. Again, I do like that, that we do find a little tidbit of clues as far as phase past, but that's really about it. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Our stupid synopsis of Wild Horses is as follows. Episode 19. Spike finds old dude to fix ship. Yay, maybe. Woo! Okay. <laughs> the team is camping out for Starship Pirates, which intrigued me a lot because I, growing up, wanted to be a space pirate cowboy. So, yeah. That was, that was what I said when I was in kindergarten. Oh, yeah. A Spike is on a desert. And gets picked up with his ship. And also this age old question. What's the ship's name was actually answered in this episode. Jeez. I don't know if it had been answered. No, I asked before. That, like, three episodes. Yeah. Three yeah. Episodes no. ago, 
Yeah, uh, but we get we get the confirmation. I never looked it up, in hoping that it would come out, and this is the one it comes out in. He gets picked up. Spike meets up with Duhan. I think that's his name, right? And he's going to fix his ship. The ship's goofed up, and uh, he needs it to be fixed up. Uh, the Bebop crew encounters pirates. The the I'm assuming the pirates. But they get um, Mick roasted, basically. <laughs> There's a virus on board. The phase get ship gets messed up, but so does the Bebop, and so does the Hammerhead, which is we find out the name of Jet's ship. And then in conversation with Spike getting his ship almost fixed, we hear the old old mechanic guy be like, Oh, the swordfish, haha. Because he says something along the lines of like, Oh, you have an assistant for not too long. You're not good at keeping those, are you? And then he's like, oh, yeah, you and the swordfish, jab, jab, jab. And that's kind of how we find out. (laughs) So Spike goes back to the Bebop because we find out that there's a virus and they need to get fixed or whatever. They need to figure this out. He goes back with uh, the swordfish, of course. And let me just say the old guy and uh, because Katie's a baseball fan. How do you feel about the whole blue socks thing? I thought it was hilarious. I really, so this guy's name is Miles, right? Yes, Miles, yes. I loved this character because I I just like, we've all met this person. This one person Absolutely. who has a hyper fixation that they just won't let go and want to bring on to other people. And it's something that I definitely relate to sometimes as mu- as much as like, it's some sometimes so annoying, but I just I just found this character really likable because throughout the whole episode he's just trying his best, and I thought he was just a wholesome character, and I was hoping we would see more of him. Great, I agree. I enjoyed the dynamic that they had together more than anything because it seems like this is what he needs. This is what they they're getting what they need from each other, which I found yeah. nice. Right, regardless, Spike goes back. Like I said before, and gets everything. Kind, he gets chewed out basically because they're like, we could have used your help out there, blah, 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 blah. And so it's just like, okay, whatever. But they do make the decision to go and look for the people that attacked them. There are two spaceships that they find because the spaceship that did attack them was a delivery service and they didn't expect it. They do find the two spaceships there that have the same emblem for the delivery service that are identical. So in Spike and Faye fashion, they're like, how do we figure out which one is which? I know, shoot at them. And the one that runs away is the one who's guilty. I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> it was like, when I was watching that, I was just kind of like, right. So we're not. No. Okay. We're just, we're just going to. Okay, good. Got it. Really do got it. That's how I felt this entire episode. (laughs) So yeah, they do exactly what they're going to say they're going to do. They shoot. And of course, they both run away. And then I love how we get the reaction. We're we're looking at Jet and we hear the reaction through the the communications, right? We we hear it through like the radio or whatever. And I think that was the perfect way because Faye was like, uh, didn't think that thing about that as an option. And it's like, right, because who wants to stay and get shot by fucking bullets? You know? I just yeah, yeah, like, yeah. anyways, Spike is in trouble. Oh, sorry. I went, I jumped too far here. Oh, it's like we're getting my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> they do, um, the, the two of them do separate and they're, uh, Spike and Faye go to their perspective ships and try to figure out which is which. Spike is the one who finds the, the pirates one. And, uh, he's in trouble now because he's taking hits. There was a little good, there was a great part here where he's like maneuvering all through the, the shots taken at him. And it was really cool. It was really, really cool. How did you feel about this part, Katie? Since it sounds like you had... This whole episode felt so Star Wars to me. Ah. Specifically, mm-hmm. so Mandalorian. Because, like, every Mandalorian episode literally feels like, oh, no, Mando's ship is broken down. I wonder if he'll find some stranger who could help him in exchange for a service. So, like, this episode of Spike literally being like, okay, I need desperately your help. And then getting into this awesome flight chase battle right felt so star warsy to me for sure and honestly i really liked getting back 
to just a little bit of flight combat. I thought it no, was delightful. Yeah, we, we definitely missed that a little bit. Andrew and I haven't really talked about the show yet, but today we talked about the show because he's really excited to listen to the podcast and I didn't want to like spoil my views on this for him. Gotcha. But he, he said something really interesting to me. And I didn't, so apparently the original source, like the original idea behind Cowboy Bebop was that there was a company that wanted to sell toy spaceships. So they commissioned a TV show and said, hey, you know, we want to make a TV show that features awesome spaceships so that we could sell more toys. And they made the first like 12 episodes of the show as a pitch for them and they didn't really pick it up for anything further because they didn't serve them anymore. And that the latter half was picked up as like half of the, the second half of the season was picked up by their own production. But that this show was literally originally made to sell spaceships. That's crazy. That is super, super crazy. We should make a cartoon about the angry belly streams. Oh my God. And then we can sell your merch. Yep. Exactly. (laughs) Breaking the code. No, yeah. that's really cool, though. I did not know that. So thank you, Andrew, for that. Oh, of course. Well, I'll, I'll tell him you thanked him. And well, he'll hear it in the episode. And also, I'll break his leg if he does anything bad to you. <laughs> he peed himself when you ever said that. <laughs> he peed himself. But uh, this, this episode reminded me that, oh, we're in space. Because I think it's easy to watch episodes and like just forget Mushroom that. Yeah. Samba. Yeah, right. and it's just, it feels so westerny. And I'm yeah. like, oh, this is such a fun western adventure. And then I'm like, oh, wait, we're in the future and we're in space. Yes. So I loved it. I loved Spike being several degrees on his angle off and using a scribe into the glass. Literally, to, to figure it out. It was so fun to me. It that was my favorite was. party episode. No, no, no. It was good. I, um, so moving on then, right, to get to that part. Yeah, yeah. He's talking to Jet, being like, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Hey, Jet, I let, I hid some beer behind this fridge. You can drink it. And then uh, old mechanic guys, like, hears him over the radio because Blue Sox boy, for some reason, was getting in, was interfering into their, their transmissions. And he was like, I will save you if you give me that beer. He does. He pulls out an old American spaceship. And uh, somehow gets it up in space. And Spike does this sick ass maneuver to perfectly land in the old spacecraft. And I loved it. I loved it. I like his resolve because he realized like it's over. I ran out of gas. Yeah. It's going to take me. I'm going to crash land and I'm going to die. So I'm going to smoke this cigarette. Jet, drink the beer. Good night, America. (laughs) He was like, I'm done. But anyways. To bounce off of what you said, I did enjoy this episode, which is weird because it was rated lower than a lot of them um, on IMDb. It's 7.3. The rest are 8.4, 6s and stuff. It's like the Rogue One. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I liked it. I did like it. I I think I did like it too more than Speak Like a Child. Yeah. Maybe not more than Mushroom Samba, but I did like it nonetheless. Let me tell you this, okay? Mm-hmm. Mushroom Samba is Phantom Menace. Speak like a child. It's Attack of the Clones. Pierre LeFou is Revenge of the Sith, and Wild Horses is Rogue One. <laughs> I feel strongly about that. Okay. Since we were talking about Pierre LeFou, let's talk about Pierre LeFou. Okay. I was looking at IMDb right, and I without going too far into the show and like without reading too much of the synopsises before I get to the end, the, before we get to the end here. Oh yeah. Pierre LeFou is one of like four episodes or five that are rated above a nine star, nine or above, Jeez. which is really cool because I'm excited to see what the last few episodes are, which are rated as higher or, or higher than Pierre LeFou. Oh, shit. So I'm excited to see what that does. But regardless, here is the stupid synopsis for Pierre LeFou. Penguin parody hurts Spike in this episode. That's what happened. (laughs) Whoever created Cowboy Bebop saw Batman Returns and was like, oh my God, I have this great idea (laughs) and ran with it. That's literally how it felt. Oh yeah. Okay, episode 20, Pure LeFou opens on a city mysteriously 
Some dead dude dressed weird kills some other dude's question mark. Spike beats a dude at- But then he has the most, like, iconic line he does. ever. He does. It's like 30 seconds of this dramatic-ass opening, which Cowboy Bebop always does, right? Oh, for sure. But then it's a close-up on his face, and he says, Hello, Hello gentlemen. gentlemen. I've come to take your lives. Like, what? It's so good. It was very much a Dracula- Like, I feel like Dracula would say that to me. I'm going to suck your blood. Oh, it was fantastic. No, no, it was good. That The openings are always good, and this this was- Again, no, uh, no uh, exception. Dab on it. But <laughs> Spike beats a guy at pool. The weird dressed guy kills the guy Spike beat at pool. And here's the good stuff. This was a re- I feel like this episode was just good for no fucking reason. Oh, they yeah. just went off. Oh yeah. They're like episode twenty. Let's fucking go, bro. And so Spike is getting into a fight with with floaty penguin parody guy and barely escapes through this whole thing. There's gunshots there's throwing knives there's grenade launchers there's an oil tub shot at and exploded in this fight there is more action in this fight than there was in the last three episodes honestly oh yeah i mean and and not and not just episode not just like not not to say the episodes are bad right but this was just such a well-crafted fight that i'm just like even though spike lost I enjoyed every second of this fight. This combat blew the past 10 episodes out of the park. Oh, absolutely. In this first scene alone. Now, I think the last the last scene is like iconically epic, probably. Oh, dude. I, yeah. Even in the first scene, which I consider to be just like, you know, slightly less exciting than the last one. Just the first scene alone blows it out of the water. Oh, Ugh. absolutely. It's It's a great opener. But yeah, so Spike does barely escape. Jet meets with a guy who warns him to stay away from, you guessed it, the Mad Parrot. So that's his name. I should mention Spike is very hurt. He does get back to the Bebop. They they wrap him up and face toying with him. He wants to eat this Mandarin. And um, she eats it right in front of him and calls him Mummy Man and says, you wouldn't be like this if you weren't so, what does she say? Clumsy or something along the lines of like just being dumb. Yeah. See, that's Regardless, why I don't like Faye. I feel like that was a little much. I feel like we didn't have to do that. <laughs> Taking candy from a wounded person. Literally, I feel. But also Spike does, in her defense, Spike also does do stupid shit all the fucking time. So I'm like. That's true. Maybe he does deserve to be kicked around a little bit in this scenario. Regardless. That's true. Mad Parrot does send mail to Spike and he's like meet me here at this place and spike is like all right i'm gonna go and Faye's is like dumbass and so he oh, leaves and then she and then ed goes you're a baka 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 ed does absolutely say that i'm glad you remember that oh it's cringy i loved it no no it was cringy um yeah and through all this uh jet is still talking to this guy and he's like oh if your partner has been has seen him your partner's marked for death he doesn't forget a face he doesn't let anybody see him who's and live and blah 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 blah. But Spike open has the out the invitation with open arms, goes through with the invitation with open arms. He's like, is this gonna be it for me? Possibly. He goes, he's still kind of stumbling around. He arrives at the at the at Spaceland and and he does find him pretty quickly. Uh they begin their encounter with um he begins sorry, he begins his encounter with Mad Parrot. And again, there's a lot of of combat here going back and forth, shooting at each other. Spike has a clip with unlimited ammo in his in his handgun there. But Jet's like, hey Ed, can you do me a favor? Can you can you hack into section 13 of, of the ISSP or whatever? Through the fighting, we go back to Mad Parrot and Spike, and uh, Spike gets thrown into like this this roller coaster, falls off straight into the water. We see Ed going back. He does see what the government has. He sees a video of the government creating the Mad Parrot parrot for an assassination program right he wants him to they wanted him to be an assassin iconic seemed like it wasn't working kind of had the born series kind of vibe to it wasn't working oh it had stranger things vibes completely oh for sure for sure but have you seen the born series no i haven't but i would be interested to. so just to put it just in your thoughts i think stranger things is probably a better analogy because of the whole like mystery and whatever but in the Bourne series jason Bourne 
is created through a CIA program to become a perfect assassin, essentially. Oh, shit. So it's literally exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Except not as creepy. <laughs> right. This whole episode, by the way, creepiest undertones. No, no, no. Of I, course, is why I loved it. No, but and it's, it's great that we're. Thing. It's oh, great that so we're weird. watching it during spooky time, too, because right now we, we uh, this it's the October the 18th. So when we're watching this, so it's, oh, it's perfect yeah. for us right now. Mm-hmm. Moving on, though. So he finds out the government made him. He escaped through killing his 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 uh, captives, the government people, um, and he leaves. In the middle of the fight, Jet and Faye do come to save uh, Spike. And Spike is like, it's not, it's not necessary. In the whole encounter, Jet and Faye do get knocked on their butt. And they do crash in their own respective ships. And there's this great moment where I have titled here in quotations, The Great Mexican Standoff. In my brain, this was like an old Western standoff, obviously. And I'm just in my brain, I'm whistling like, you know what I mean? Like the whole, the. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if the mic cut out when I did that, actually. But just pretend. It, uh, yes, it did. I, I only heard a part of it. it. So then pretend I whistled. Pretend I whistled. I need, I need you to know what I could hear is. <laughs> it's too so high like, of a I'm, pitch. I'm hearing it, but I don't know if they'll hear Got it. Got it. They probably won't. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, that moment had a lot of stakes in it because I think we knew and I think Spike knew he was severely outclassed, outgunned, outmatched in every stretch of the word. But we figure oh, out. I love your Hamilton reference, bro. Was it a Hamilton? Was that, was that straight from the Hamilton Hams? I didn't realize oh, it. Oh, yeah. Great. I don't remember, but I'm going to take your word for it. I don't care what anybody says. Side note. I love Hamilton. Moving on. Wait, can I tell you what Toddington said yesterday? Toddington said, Megan the Stallion? What horse shit? He said, Megan the Stallion is not Hamilton. And if it's not Hamilton, it's not for me. What? (laughs) I literally was rolling on the floor. Also, Toddington is my father. Toddington is her father. Or Massive Peen. Also known as Massive Peen. (laughs) And the reason the reason we say that is because quite literally was his gamer t- or sorry his username in my Twitch streams. Hell yeah, massive peen. And it was a mystery to us for a while until <laughs> we figured it out ourselves as to who this person was. Was well, hilarious being chaotic in the streams. It was fun. That was good vibes. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Spike's eyes remind him, and I thought this was very fun and interesting of his time being experimented on. With the government. And so yeah. if you remember in the flashback, or not in the flashback, but in the video, there's this cat with two separate eye colors. And mm-hmm. he has a second where he's about to kill Spike. And he's like, oh my God. Like he had the realization that the cat remind or he reminded him of the cat with the government. And so in there, he misses a beat, doesn't take the shot, or does take the shot. Spike narrowly gets out of the way, has a throwing knife, throws it to his leg, and the mad parrot all of a sudden is 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 no longer like he is he's reverted to this childlike person, uh. right? This childlike adult, and so we uh. figure out that he the all of the experiments or whatever caused him to revert to having a the mind of a child, but still retaining human superhuman strength as well as a tenacity to kill and. This insane, like, combat strength, you know? And then possibly one of my favorite moments of the whole show. Um, I don't know about you, Katie, but he, whenever he starts, he starts to cry and be like, mommy, blah, 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 I'm I'm hurt, I'm sad, whatever. And then his own animatronics that he was using to help fight are just walking in a line next to him or around him. And he, as he's on the ground crying about his little boo-boo, gets fucking crushed straight up crushed this was one of those moments for me where i was like holy crap dude they really just did that so this this whole part i literally was so sad this when he was crying out for his mother like it it really made me tear up and i don't know if that's like me and my own personal trauma i have not dealt with but that shit made me so so sad 
it it was devastating to me because ultimately you're watching what we now see this person who never wanted to be this villain who was forced through scientific experimentation to become right. a monster right and then killed because of choices he never made oh like and and it's such an emotional moment and and you can see spike too really struggling with what just happened because jet calls back and he's like it's because in that moment he understands he's like not anymore he understands like what happened oh my god you know it like it there's was this understanding between him and the situation to be like oh Ugh. this is in fact a child which is a crazy realization when you see all the blood and you see all the yeah things that he's done and you're like I all of a sudden feel empathy for this character who I did. I had zero empathy for before that, before this. Yeah. I'm going to say that this is probably my favorite episode at this point. I, yeah, I, oh, I was just blown easy. away by this episode. Easy, like, me too. It, it had everything. It had mystery. It had Great choreography, great music. It had great, uh, just a great story. Like, holy crap, dude. They, 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 they yeah. put their bussy all up in this one because this one was fucking immaculate, yeah. dude. Seriously. I just, and it was, I think like, and I didn't know if it was just me because I don't, for like, whatever listeners don't know me, I am a total horror fanatic. So I, I just, and it was just so because this episode literally felt like it was pulled from a thriller. Yeah. And yeah, it felt agreed. like Stranger Things mixed with episode like the carnival theming of a Scooby Doo episode and Batman Returns and like Especially just, with the oh with the God. long shadowy buildings, very yes. Batman esque, very ba- this so is a very ba- Batman story. This is a Batman story. If I've ever seen yeah. one that wasn't Batman. Uh I just, I loved this episode. It was, to me, like, the character and backstory that made me just so fall for these characters. And I just, oh my god, I I was so sad to see him die. And I think the main reason I was so sad is because I I wanted him to be the plot. I wanted him to be the rest of the series. (laughs) I, I wanted this villain to carry us to the end of the series. I really, really did. Yeah. Because he was so engaging. Sadly for and you, I'm just, uh, that's not the case, I don't think. <laughs> also, these big-ass FNAF animatronics just Oh my god, me. shut up, please. Uh, oh my god, I didn't even think, we were I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of that until you said it, dude. We were oh all thinking it, Louis. <laughs> No, it, yeah, absolutely fine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, they do resemble that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. the chunks for now. Shit. Just a few last things before we we send ourselves off. I think it's safe to assume that we're going to finish off. We're going to do three episodes for the next chunk. And then after that, the last three episodes. So the next chunk, we're going to do 21 through 23. Which is going to consist of boogie woogie feng, feng, feng shui, feng shui, feng shui, a cowboy funk, and brain scratch, and then we'll finish it off with the last three, and um, with the opportunity to hopefully sit and talk about how we feel, our collective thoughts about cowboy bebop as a whole. It's going to kill me because we're taking a pause between recording this next week. We and are. I really like to watch right before we do the podcast, so I can remember as much as possible. And I can't express how badly I just want to watch the next episode right now. I agree. Uh, especially after this. I will say, though, not to, not, to, not to be ugly, but the next episode is pretty low on the, on the, the rating scale as far as what's IM, the, uh, IMDb is concerned. What's the number? 7.1. Okay. And we haven't love- had one that like low the last yet. episode? I would love in the last episode to just go through the rankings of all these episodes. It is, it is truthfully, it is the the lowest ranked episode according to IMDb. If anybody's oh, is um, okay. concerned with that, 
So we're we're going we're coming from a really high high to a potentially really low low. So we'll see how that goes. Well, that goes. helps me though. That helps me wean myself for another week. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So away from Cowboy Bebop, uh, we here at the the Angry Belly Anime Watch podcast, where we watch anime, are starting to consider what we're going to be watching next. I believe the front runner for us, or for Katie, one that Katie brought up, is watching Jujutsu Kaisen, is watching um, the first season of that, and potentially the movie. So we'll see what we decide. But if you guys have any thoughts or opinions as to what you feel like we would enjoy, what you'd like to hear us talk about, or what you'd like to just watch with us, please in the comments put in anything, anything, and we'll take all and any suggestions seriously. Unless they're One Piece, because that's a lot. <laughs> we would very I, easily I become an only one, only one Piece podcast. Specifically, just a One Piece podcast. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably just... If you want to talk, talk to me about One Piece, go to my Discord. I, talk, I love One Piece. Regardless. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, that's about it. Jujutsu Kaisen is kind of what we're looking at right now. But uh, uh, if we see something else that y'all suggest, or we, we you know, not set in stone yet. And, and even, if we don't, even if we don't choose it next, uh, it'll be something to have on the list to have in the back of our mind. Yeah. Because we're in this for the long haul, y'all. The haul, long haul, y'all. Yep. And also, yeah, exactly. like, the, the other thing is, too, we were considering, and, and, and Katie brought this up earlier before we started uh, recording, we're considering doing something like watching a season of something and then watching another season of something, coming back to the other season of something and, and that sort of thing. So, um, anyways, the great thing about Jujutsu and other shows that are coming out barely is that there's only one season out for a lot of these shows. So. Yeah. That's that. That is something we're kind of trying to stick to a, an easier watch, just to kind of start off the podcast. And if someone is like, "I'll give you fifty thousand dollars if you just watch all of One Piece," sold. Consider it done. <laughs> um, but yeah. So yeah. Um. Anyways, as we end this podcast, Katie, uh, where can people find you if they want to follow you or or see what you're up to? Oh my God, is it time for plugs? It's time. That's crazy. For plugs. Time for plugs. Uh, you can find me at Real Slim Katie Twenty Five on Instagram, TikTok, Letterbox. Hit me you up. Use uh, I also want to throw a shout out. Uh, my best friend has this great YouTube channel called The Angry Belly. Oh, you dumbass! You should really <laughs> check I was, it out, dude. I was really like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Who's who's she about to shout out right now? Well, hey, if I can, if I am going to shout out somebody else, it'll be at Dylan Reviews on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. So Dylan and I have actually been talking. I'm supposed to, I don't know if this is a spoiler, uh, record the Black Adam review with him. Oh, my God. I have to see that this weekend. I have to see this on Thursday. I'm going to on Thursday. Are you excited about it? Hey, the reviews are not great, but I want to see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. For sure. Also, if you have a podcast of your own, and I just want to throw this out out there, and I haven't talked to Katie about this. If you have a podcast of your own and you would like us to put a little commercial in here of your own podcast, of your own anime podcast, or just podcast in general where you review things and talk about things like this, feel free to shoot me a DM on on any social media. And I'd be happy to take a look at your content and and, and see if this is something that um I, you know, we want to have a partnership in. I'm I'm doing this in an effort to keep a community together and to keep us growing, if that makes sense. Keep the bros growing and the For hoes And speaking of Dylan, we I asked him if he would be down to do something like that. So I'm just waiting on his answer, but I imagine it's something. Hell like that. yeah! I'm, I'm I'm imagining it's something like yes. But anyways, Hell yeah. Uh, that's gonna be it for today. Cool. As always, remember to have fun, be safe, and to keep those bellies full. Yum, yum, yum.